What's up everyone, Sean Count Blagareth here with an album review, this time of the 2012 Unique Leader Records release of Radiophobia by Cytotoxin. If you're not familiar with Cytotoxin, they are a technical death metal band hailing from Germany, and this is their second album. I have listened to their debut, and I did have high expectations for this. Um, I just first discovered this band through a subscriber of mine. I can't remember who it was offhand, and I apologize. But he sent me a video of recor their recording of their first album. And within the first minute, I was blown away. And I instantly got the album, and I showed it to all my friends, and they loved it. And I kind of forgot about the band because I haven't listened to them in forever, and then this came through in the mail and um, I must say I was extremely excited popped it in and wow oh my god uh, where to begin with this the best way to describe this band is how I tell some of my friends is it's beneath the massacre meets slam and I love that it is so sick uh, first and foremost, the guitar is absolutely punishing. From the slams and the breakdowns to the extremely technical fast sweeps and taps that are done, everything sounds good and the guitar player is absolutely phenomenal. And if I'm to be honest, he might be one of my favorite guitarists in Tech Death. Um, just some very, very good stuff. The song structures are pretty, um, not necessarily predictable, but they are relatively standard for what Cytotoxin does, which is provides you with an extremely technical variant of deathcore and slam. And the way the song structures flow is it's kind of same-ish, where it's the very fast sweeps and taps and technical riffing followed by some more extremely fast and heavy riffing into a slam or a breakdown and then more of that with a solo but if I'm to be honest I really like that formula because for some bands it becomes boring and tiresome for these guys and on this album it really works out well for them and I think that's a great thing that it works out so well um, the guitar tone itself is very good and it works great for every single range. There's nothing about the guitar tone itself that I think sounds bad. It's a very good balanced medium for the heavy parts and for the extremely technical parts. Uh, one of my favorite things about the guitars on here, and if I'm to be honest, is actually like the slams and the breakdowns. Because some of them are some of the heaviest things I've ever heard, like um, the Red Forest. It has a pan into a breakdown that just blew my mind the first time I heard it. Um, I was just sitting here in my room listening to it, and my jaw just hit the floor. And I just had to rewind it to hear that part again. It is so disgusting. And you'll find moments like that on this entire record where you're just like, I can't believe this band is this brutal, and this punishing, and this awesome. I love this album. The bass tone, it's a little flat for my particular taste, but in the end it does sound good. And it sounds good for what they're going for, and it makes sense. Which is a extremely technical sort of uh, sound, because they're a technical death metal band. Uh, it makes sense for the music. And I can't really hate it because they're playing what this genre is. So, I think the bass, I would personally like to see a little bit more thickness in the bass tone, but what the bassist is doing is great. And maybe the little thickness would actually make it kind of muddy sounding, so I could be wrong. Um, Drum-wise, amazing, amazing stuff. Uh, trigger drums are extremely hit or miss for me, like the Rings of Saturn album, the new one, It I can't handle the snare. This, on the other hand, it sounds amazing. During Gravities, it's not annoying. During Blast, it sounds good. During the regular hits and, like, uh, let's say the breakdowns or whatever, it's a very punchy snare, and I like to hear a good punch in the snare. And this provides that. Um, 
the drums, like with the kicks and stuff, very, very good. Very unique patterns, I must say. One of the things that really impressed me about the breakdowns and the slams were the patterns that they used. Uh, they didn't go through a typical 4-4, and if it was a 4-4 sort of thing, is the kick pattern was extremely ridiculous, and therefore the chug pattern went with the kick pattern, which really made for this more complex sounding breakdown that, in my opinion, works extremely well, and a lot of bands can't really do that. I love the breakdowns on this. Um, in between some of the breakdowns, they throw in a little bit of, like, uh, technical a little soloing or uh, some sweeps, taps, or just something really ridiculously fast to go in between it. And that, once again, creates a whole nother sound to the breakdowns that makes it just as enjoyable as the rest of the album, if not more. Uh, the fast parts, when it comes to the drumming, it's really more focused on the blast beats, but there are some very good um, patterns when it comes to going in between gravities and regular blasts and thrash beats and doing fills in between and all this other stuff. It's very good stuff. Now here's the deal breaker for the album and this band is the vocals. This is going to be something that people are either going to love or despise. And I love it. If you don't like pig squeal vocals, you will not dig this. Lots of pig squeals, very guttural. Very guttural. Um, extremely low stuff where it just sounds like gargling or even just something very disgusting sounding. If you've heard like underground slam vocals that are like sort of stuff, that's what some of the lows sound like on here. And the pig squeals are just very loud, very powerful, and I love them. Uh, pig squeals are either hit or miss for me. Um, either they have to be they have to be done right. Either I love them or despise them, and I love them on this. Some people have, would say that they're overdone. I personally think that they're done tastefully and they're done in uh, good amounts. I wouldn't complain too much about the pig squeals, for me at least. If you don't like that stuff, you're not going to dig this. But vocal-wise, I think it's very good and the singer's an absolute beast. Especially his just straight-up low vocals have so much power in them. I'm just blown away by it. Overall, this is a very solid piece of technical death metal and probably one of my favorite tech death albums, if not my favorite technical death metal album from this year. Uh, it's a very, very hard, uh, it's going to be, how should I put it, it's going to be hard to make my top 20 list this year because normally I don't include that much death metal in that because I'm a black metal guy, but this album just blows my mind and there's tons of really good death metal that came out this year. So this is going to be very difficult for me to make this list, but God, this is such an awesome album. It's so hard for me to give a score. I'm going to have to give this a 9. This is some very solid stuff. If I had a one complaint and one complaint only about it is the structures kind of tend to blend in together a little bit. But with that said, what they're doing is still sick and still awesome, so I can't really complain. But it still does feel kind of same-ish from song to song, so they do kind of blend in a little bit. But my god, it is such an awesome album. I encourage all of you to pick this up. This is coming out on November 6th. Please do yourself the favor and buy this. Order it from either the band or the label. Pick it up the first week. Do whatever you can. You have to buy this album. Nasty, nasty technical death metal. You need to own this in your collection if you're a fan of tech death or deathcore or slam. This is sick. So, 9 out of 10. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for subscribing. As always, keep it metal.